Hello, welcome to Missy's Imaginings. Thank you for coming along. We are in the midst of a series of videos to put together an old-fashioned outfit. It will consist of the undergarment. It's a combination undergarment that's one piece for the top and bottom that we did in video number one. Then we did the petticoats in video no number two. And we kind of compared the two different ways to make the skirt for this outfit. And now in video number three, we're going to be putting together the gown. Um, I am feeling a little bit better. And thank you so much. All of you commented and sent good wishes and, and prayers. I appreciate it. Um, I did go back to work, but it's been like... I get through the day and then I just want to go home. Usually we have stops and things that we need to make on the way home, but I have just been zonked. So um, I am feeling a little bit better, but I'm glad that I'm getting to the end of my work week. So um, I'll be able to get some more rest this weekend. So that'll be good. So I thought I wanted to jump on here while I still have some daylight. And we're going to go ahead and kind of go over what this video will be um, before I close everything down and... and head off to sleepy time. So, um, the gown for this outfit will be in kind of a darker sage green satin. Bear with me, it really needs to be ironed. So, it's really wrinkled at this point, but it's a really pretty green. And um, we kind of went over the fabrics in the first video, but I thought, well, I'll hold it up here and we can take a look at it. So the entire gown will be the same fabric. It'll all be this green satin. And I'm going to have to uh, take a closer look at our instructions when we go to put it together because at this point I can't remember if I'm going to need to have the yoke on the skirt and then attach it to the bodice or if the skirting section directly attaches to the bodice. I'm not sure if the skirt will have this yoke because all the pieces for the skirt of the gown are the same pieces that you use for the petticoat. So I have to reread my instructions. The bodice, if I hold it up onto the doll, it comes about halfway uh, down the yoke. And if I take a seam allowance, that's going to be even less. So it might be that the bodice just attaches to the top of the yoke on the skirt. Um, that could be how it's supposed to fit, but we'll have to take a look at our instructions and uh, see kind of how that's going to play out. So that's the one thing that I'm not sure of, and I'll have to double check instructions. So we'll figure that out. And then the sleeves are a little bit unique in that they have a, uh, a long piece and then they also have an inset piece that will be a combination of like a mitered corner and a gathered poof. So it will sew on the edge here. Then this will all be gathered and will fit this short little ledge of the sleeve to make the poof that falls behind the elbow. So that'll be interesting. And then there's also a little dart in the sleeve. Um, the only thing I'm kind of concerned about is the width of the sleeve because I knew it would be long enough, and especially with the puff, but I think I'm going to be fine. It's just going to be um, making sure that this will go around her arm and close. But I think if I'm careful, it will work. In the pattern, it says only to use one eighth seam allowances. And even though I enlarged it, I may stick to that just to make sure I have enough room to uh, get it around her arm. But that is what we're going to do in this video is the gown. And then in the last video are going to be the lace overlay top and the lace overlay skirt that goes it's two pieces that go on top of the gown. So a lot of layers in this outfit. And then to finish it off, <laughs> I think I bought a hat at um, the doll show and I love it. Uh, there's a lady there that makes fantastic historical hats. 
and so I'll probably put that on her to finish out the outfit. I think it'll look really good when it's all done. So that's what we're going to do in this video. And um, before we pop over to the sewing machine, I just wanted to let you know that the doll show for the Wagon Wheel Dollars will be March 23rd. It's a Saturday at the Polk County Fairgrounds um, here in Oregon. It's uh, located very close, not like right on the corner, but kind of at the crossroads of 99 and 20, Highway 21 that, or 22 that goes over the mountains to Sisters. Anyway, I'm not sure which one it is. I've lived here all my life and I still get 21 and 22 mixed up. But anyway, it's on Highway 99. It's right at the Rick Real Junction. And so if you're in the Pacific Northwest and you love doll shows, it's a fun doll show. It has a very homey atmosphere. Uh, we have a wonderful uh, crew that does concessions. So that's always a plus. So if you, you're wanting lunch or a snack, they have you covered there. And um, it'll just be a fun show. So I'll have my table all set up. I'll put a little picture here of what it looks like so you know what to look for. Of course, it has all my hydrangeas on the table skirting. And, and uh, so then you can find me if you're wanting to come to a show and see all the magnificent products that people have to offer there. And there's all kinds of fashion dolls, um, antique collector dolls, and everything in between. So, um, yeah, that'll be the 23rd of March. It's 2024, in case you're watching this video when it's really old. <laughs> So if it's past 2024 March, you've missed it. But for those of you who would like to come, um, yeah, that's going to be not this weekend, but the next weekend, and I will be there. So you can come along and see how the outfit turns out and uh, view it in person. So there we go. So all right, we'll go ahead and switch up the camera, and we'll get started on our gown. After looking at all my instructions again, I discovered that there's a little bit of the instructions that I'm kind of confused about. So we're going to go forward and uh, see if I can make sense of it. <laughs> so in the instructions, it starts out with putting the bodice pieces together, which is pretty standard, pretty simple. And then the sleeve, we've already looked at how the, the placard sits into the sleeve. So that seems pretty normal. The confusing part comes, it starts with the overskirt and taking the top of the overskirt where all the pleats are here, which in and of itself is fine. So I've worked with pleats before. Um, there is one dart and so getting this all pleated is fine. But then the pattern instructions say to pin this to the skirt yoke, so be this lacy piece all pleated, pinned to the yoke. But the confusing part in my brain is it says to pin it with the right side of the yoke, let's see, and the wrong side of the lace which would either mean it ends up like this with a raw edge or like this with a raw edge. Um, and so this would be sewn to here and fitted to here. And then the underskirt is then supposed to be sewn on. But if I sew it like this, there is no edge to sew the underskirt to because I've attached this to this part. So I'm not sure how that's supposed to work. <laughs> and there's no reference to once it's pinned, like if it's just for sizing purposes, there's no reference to take it off and baste it and then to attach them together. So with no pictures to use as reference, and even in the actual pattern design, let's grab that here. Hopefully the, the sheen of the plastic won't 
interrupt here. There's no view of the front. It's only the back. And even here, like, it's real hard to tell. It's just a, a very rough sketch. So there's no way to verify. Um, it looks like maybe there's some embellishment added on here. But still, it would make it difficult to put all those together. So, I am going to do the following. Because this is all supposed to be put together as one piece and then attached to the bodice, I am going to pleat this to the top edge with the darts, just as instructed. And then I'm going to actually baste it on to the yoke with right sides of the lace to the right side of the yoke. Then the underskirt, let's open this up so we see the good side of the fabric. If my fingers will work today. There we go. Okay. So that way, when I actually sew this together, we'll have the right side of the lace outward and it'll all be pleated to fit. It'll be on top of the skirting on the right side of the skirting and then we would end up sewing the right the right side of the yoke to the right side of the lace so that when it flips out we've got all right sides showing then this raw edge will be attached to the bodice. Um, and then I can always add trim if I want, but I could not make sense of those instructions. I just could not picture it in my head. And even as I was looking through the pieces to like take the steps, it's just very vague to put the right side of the yoke to the wrong side of the lace. That doesn't make sense to me at all. <laughs> I don't know what that means because it would be this edge and like I say, if we sewed it with the right, the wrong side of the lace, let's just imagine this here, the wrong side of the lace and the right side of the yoke together, then when you turn that out, you've got the wrong side of the lace showing and the right side of the yoke. So I didn't get it. I didn't understand that. The wording was not helping me. So I'm going to just kind of go with my own methods of <laughs> laying pieces together so that I end up seeing what I want to see in the finished product. So I hope that um, can be helpful for you if you're putting things together in layers um, and especially when the top layers are not the same. I understand you do you know the work that you need to do to this piece then this one of course will be gathered then these are going to be placed both with right sides up because you want your right side of the satin showing through the right side of the lace and then the right side of the yoke would go to the right side of the lace and then when you turn it up you have all right sides of fabrics with all your seams hidden. So that's what we're going to do. Um, <laughs> I just thought it was really confusing so we're going to kind of go with Missy's old method and uh, I think it will still end up beautifully, um, but we're going to kind of try that because, like I say, I did not understand what that meant. So, because this is attached, this gives us the entire gown. Then all that will be left will be the overlace bodice top, which, after double checking, is a totally separate piece. And um, so I don't know if we'll be able to fit that in this video or if we'll actually do one last video for the overlay bodice, the lacy bodice part. Also, a little side note, I did change all my thread in the serger machine because I want all the serging of raw edges to be in the same color as the gown. But I did change up my serger machine from the normal uh, stitching type, which usually ends up being a quarter of an inch. And I set up the machine for what's called the rolled hem, but I did not change like the tensions and everything so that it completely closes all those stitches. And I'm not using uh, 
one of the threads that's very common for a rolled edge. Let me grab it down here in, in the door here. Um, I do have some of this type of thread, which, let's see if I can pull it out here. It's, it's a very interesting type of thread. And as you can tell, I bought it with such anticipation and still haven't used it. <laughs> but it's, it looks, you know, like a normal thread. Let me get some off of here. But once there's no tension on it, it kind of fuzzes and expands so that it would, as you sew with it, once the tension is done, because it's done going through your tension discs, because it expands and kind of gets a little bit fuzzy, it would fill in the little gaps that would normally occur with just normal thread. But I don't have this kind of thread in the right color. So I'm just going to forego the, the fancy edging, but I did want this to be very narrow because on the sleeves, uh, like we talked about a little bit here, I do have some little edges that are going to be folded in like so. And I don't want to risk having that overlock stitching showing on the outside. And I need to make these very narrow seams just to ensure that they can fit my doll. So I wanted the serging that will finish off any raw edges to be very narrow. So I did make that uh, that change to uh, the settings of my overlock uh, serger machine. So anyway, if you're doing doll clothing, um, this is just a handy method and it will be in the instructions uh, for your machine. And instead of using all four of the spools um, and two needles, you only use three of the spools and one needle to achieve this rolled uh, hem. So it's just a change in the machine that's very convenient for doll clothing. Um, if you have a machine like that and you want to get a more narrow stitch to uh, finish off your raw fabric. So that's where we are with these pieces. Uh, the first step when I get the sewing machine is going to be on the back pieces, we have to baste across the top shoulder and just gather it a tiny bit, not really even a gather, it's just a little scrunching to fit the front shoulder um, because there's a little bit of ease uh, fabric here so that um, it's a little puffier and gives a little more room on the shoulder. So I will uh, kind of baste here and then scrunch it up to fit this. And uh, then I will sew in the darts that have been placed onto the fabric. Let's see if we can get it to show there in the lighting. So I will be putting the two darts in the front and then there's one dart in each of the back pieces. And I'll do those. I'll fit those together at the shoulder. Then I will serge that shoulder seam allowance so it's nice and finished. Then to do the sleeves, it says first that it was odd to me, but it says to baste this and baste that and then sew these together, which to me seems very strange. So I'm going to go ahead and put this edge together first. Uh, let's see, I have it upside down. Excuse me. There we go. I'm going to put the sleeve, um, sew this edge, and then we clip here. And then I will add my basting stitches in the shoulder so that I'm doing the entirety of the shoulder instead of one piece and then the second piece. I will just do the entire shoulder top to gather that. Then I will gather this piece to match here. Um, this dart will be done and then it will be pressed towards the elbow. And then I believe I need to serge this little edge that sticks out and this one that will be yeah, and I may even end up, yeah, I think that's what I do. So I'm not sure why these notches are different. I'm going to have to see how it goes together to determine why that is. Um, I'm not sure about that yet. So a lot of little finagling as I get this piece put together, 
but then this gathered piece will fit on this little ledge and then I'll serge this entire piece once the piece is inset because with this clipped I can open that out as a straight line and just serge the entire line and I just have to keep all the fabric out of the way and since I have this real narrow serging line I'm not worried about those stitches going too far into the fabric so hopefully that makes sense that's kind of where I'm at so far then of course the shoulder is inset into the the armhole of the bodice and that kind of gets that portion ready then we have the skirting that we talked about and um, it looks like I'll only need one of the yokes so this other one would just end up being extra because I will just use the serger to finish any edges. I am not going to line the bodice uh, simply because there's so many layers involved here because we ha already have the undergarment which is uh, quite a bit of fabric when you compare it to undergarments it's not just a little bralette uh, so because it's an entire garment we have that garment then we have this garment then there's going to be another lacy bodice over the top and I don't want to add a whole nother layer of fabric just for the sake of lining this bodice so I will finish all the raw edges with the overlock machine and um, that way it will minimize how many layers of fabric are being built up on the doll so there we go so we'll go ahead and start those steps and when I get some things accomplished we'll come back to the camera and take a look at them um, just for the sake of time <laughs> and see how they went together on the sleeves I went ahead and surged the edges and I did discover that when I was cutting these out I probably misunderstood a notch for the little placket here so this actually is not longer than it's longer than it should be but it's not the natural pattern I cut that wrong <laughs> so this should kind of go to here and then come out but I don't mind having a little extra fabric so at least I know what I'm working with and this is the correct place where the sleeve opening will be this long I've stay stitched the straight edge and the little ledge and I've put in the little dart that is pressed toward the elbow then on our uh, insert piece of the sleeve let's get the other one so we can compare um, I've went ahead and uh, basted double basted the real the fully curved edge so this is only kind of a slight upward curve and it stops but this one comes back up so this is the lower edge I've gathered that now this will be sewn oh and I've also clipped here into the corner so now when I go through the machine see how oh and I might need to clip it a little bit more right to the stitching there we go so when I sew this edge instead of trying to sew and pivot on a corner because I've clipped that I can open that up and kind of feed a straight line through my machine I know I say that a lot in a lot of videos but if you kind of get that mindset it can really help the way things move through the machine for you is make your machine think you're sewing a straight line and it's just easier than trying to adjust all these curves and going around corners now sometimes you can't help it because sometimes a curve is just a curve but as many um, times as you can just feed a straight line through that machine it'll just make it easier for you so I'm going to go ahead and pin this and I'm taking those really small seam allowances too they're only about an eighth of an inch sometimes a little bit longer but right on this pivot point is the corner so I'll have that pinned and then this gather will be sewn to match that little ledge and so I'm just going to feed it through as a straight line with the gathered part on the bottom just to help it go through the machine a little easier and then that will form let's see if we can kind of get it so we know what it's going to look like here so this will have a gathered puff on the back of the elbow so this will all gather in here so I'll get this done on both sleeves and get them ready then once this 
sleeve is put together, then I will need to do the basting across the top of the shoulder so that I can fit this top of the shoulder into the bodice, which is also put together. So here's my front with the two darts and then a dart on each side of the back. And then I did serge all the way around the back and the neckline. Also, before I did this, I did go ahead and clip down to where my seam line would be so that when I surged it I kind of opened that up just to give a better opening because I didn't want to clip through my little surging uh, stitches because I knew that then once it's clipped all this surging will just come off anyway. <laughs> so I pre-clipped the fabric then opened it up and like I say fed that as a straight line through the surging machine just to give a better opening so it will be easier to get the lace on there that's going to be the the collar essentially. So I did finish that so I won't have any raw fabric um, but I did go ahead and clip to open that up a little bit better down to where the seam line needs to be. So once I get the sleeves into the bodice that will be ready and on the skirting I have went ahead and surged all the way down the center back and the hem lines of all my skirt pieces. So that part is done So that, because once we put that together the back seam at the top needs to be able to open and so I want folded fabric on my opening edges and so I surge this because it's going to be sewn, but then it has to open. So these edges, I don't want them to be raw fabric. Um, so I do always surge the back center seam uh, where the opening is, just so that everything's nice and finished. So once the bodice is complete, then I'll go ahead and get this pleated and this gathered to match the yoke. I did notice because I extended that yoke of the skirt a little bit, the pleating is going to adjust a little bit. They won't be as big a pleats um, to fit this to that extended yoke. But I will mark on the pattern where my center front is and then kind of adjust each side as I need to in the pleating to match the distance on the yoke. Because one is pleated a little bit more. Um, because it has this uprising in the hem that's going to be lifted. So there is a little bit more pleating on this one side. But that's how far I am in our process. So when I have uh, more substantial steps finished, we'll come back to the camera. Here is the bodice so far with the sleeves. So I did put the lace around the collar and I did top stitch the seam allowance towards the bodice that will kind of help the collar stand up and prevent that seam allowance from flipping back up and um, intruding on the actual neckline. Then I went ahead and did the sleeves. So here's what they look like with the piece inset. This is the back of the elbow and then the top gathered so it's ready to fit into the arm opening. And then I did put some trim on the bottom. Now this trim, I didn't top stitch this down or anything because once I put the sleeves together, part of this will be sewn in, let's see here, so that it can turn this way and then that'll be my opening. So I didn't want to go ahead and sew this down until I know how that sleeve is going to fit. But then when the sleeve is, is done, we'll have a little bit of lace up the back of the sleeve as well as right on the cuff. And then uh, there's the little dart and then the pucker here, which is the back of the elbow. So this is the front of the sleeve. There we go. And then the back, once it's together, We'll just hold it up here will look like this on the back of the sleeve so my next step I'm going to go ahead and put the sleeves into the shoulder openings and then as well um, as far as trims and lace I also put the trim on the bottom of the satin and the trim on the bottom of the lace skirt so those are ready to start putting those together 
and getting uh, the top waist seam connected to the yoke and ready for the bodice because I've got all this finishing work kind of done and out of the way. So that's where we are and we'll keep on moving. Here is the bodice so far with the sleeves sewn in. This of course is the wrong side of the fabric but that way you can kind of see the seam work. I do, oh I need to kind of flip this. I always like to flip the seam allowance of the shoulder and around the arm opening toward the sleeve so that I don't have extra bulk on the top of the shoulders but rather in the puff of the sleeve. It's just kind of what I prefer. So that's why the seam allowances of the arm opening go towards the sleeve. The ones towards the elbow, it was a little hard to get all this guy um, in the seam, this little pucker in the center kept wanting to pull out, so I did have to go a little deep there, but there's so much room in that puff that I think it will be fine. And then that seam I did up towards the puff because there's actual room there, so that's where I want that extra bulk to go. I want it to go where there's room for it. Um, on the sleeves, I went down to the point, and then there's this little uh, cut placket which it's okay if I sew this again I am going to change the under seam of the sleeve just to be one straight shot um, I just prefer having the entire seam to be able to open and and work like that um, I have several videos on long sleeve shirts and it just kind of shows how I prefer to do a cuff or a hem and then have the opening um, not have any raw edges and here I'm ending up with a little tag of raw fabric here which is not what I prefer so I would change that part so let's go ahead and uh, turn this right side out and get a look at it hopefully it's gonna look okay <laughs> let's take the sleeve cuff and just pull that out and working with satin, I did have a couple little instances where there was a slight um, little snag in the fabric, which it's just part of working with satin, and uh, it can snag kind of easy. But I think I was able to pull them out so they look pretty smooth. So here we go. Pull this little cuff out of the sleeve there, and then that will turn in. So that way my sleeves will have lace uh, around the wrist and then a little up the arm, just for fun. And these are very, very narrow seams, um, so I'm not going to clip uh, under the arm. A lot of times I'll snip the seam allowance under here, but because these are so narrow, I'm not going to do that. So here is the sleeve. This is the back with the shoulder puff and then the puff at the elbow. Puff this guy out here too. There we go, and the puff at the elbow. Okay, so this is the back. Let's see, well, and I haven't turned this. Uh, this is finished, but it's not. Uh, the finished garment will actually, I believe, fold over like this. Um, but I want to fit it on the doll first. And um, my fittings thus far have been okay. So, oh, and I've got some fuzz here take that out. So here is the bodice from the front. Looks a little floppy. <laughs> so there we go. And then the sleeves. Turn those in. So that's what the bodice looks like thus far on our little old-fashioned gown. So it went together pretty well. All the pieces fit pretty well. Um, I would just make that one small change on the sleeves. Um, that I would prefer and I may widen this part just so I don't have so much of this seam showing towards the front of the sleeve. I would like this to go back a little bit farther but overall my puff looks pretty even on the shoulders so that went together pretty well. So there's the bodice. So yeah, so the next part will be to get the skirt ready so we can attach this together and uh, get this gown finished up. Okay, well I'm back with um, 
it's later in the evening and so I've lost my natural lighting I was uh, spending some time with my daughters downstairs and so I came back up and I wanted to go ahead and kind of get this gown finished up so I'm back I've gotten the the skirting all attached to the yoke and then the bodice attached to the yoke and so everything is done except for actually putting the back together so shall we flip it around <laughs> here we go so here is our little gown and the yoke at the waist and then I did top stitch the seam allowance from the skirt up into the yoke and the seam allowance from the bodice down into the yoke the only thing that I found was there was never really a time for it and so it didn't really happen in that the edge of the yoke on the very end sides there was never a time when that was really convenient to run it through the serger and now it really isn't attached because I have two layers of fabric here um, that I don't want to be connected on either side um, so what I did is I have some fray check which is essentially like a glue um, to keep things from fraying and I put like a healthy little amount on each end of the yoke and once that's dry then it becomes like hard because it's like a fabric glue uh, not necessarily to te keep fabrics glued together but to prevent things from f coming apart like on the end like this so once it's good and dry I will go ahead and trim away all the little f uh, spare threads and the ends of that that have kind of come loose and some surging bits from when I attached and finished those seam allowances um, so when that's dry I will go ahead and do that to attach the back uh, let's flip it back around here and well here we'll flip it up so you can kind of see the lay of the fabric so here's the skirting and there's the the interesting lift on this side towards the back that's kind of fun um, so I think it'll show up better once it's actually hanging but when I go ahead and do the back of the gown together I and I have my needle sunk so don't worry my needles not gonna catch on my satin <laughs> I could just see the sleeve going under there and the needle catching it so the needle is sunk on my machine um, so I don't want these two layers to be sewn together in the back because I want the overskirt to to hang freely over the underskirt all the way around and so what I will do is I will sew the back of the underskirt this back seam with right sides together of course and then I'll leave an opening probably two in, well what is that about three and a half inches or so from the waist um, just so I can get the doll down through there but I will sew the green underskirt back center seam then I will do the back overlay center seam so when those are sewn closed they will still fall freely and independent from one another so here I'm put my hand in here so that my skirt won't end up um, and I've seen this like in a lot of uh, inexpensive oh, Barbie clothes and whatever there'll be multiple layers but they're all sewn together in the back so the back layer uh, in the back the top layer doesn't fall freely over the top layer and I don't want those connected at all and so I will sew them separately and then the only place that they will actually be connected is where there may be a closure you know of a snap that's that's going to overlap so if I have that three inches or three and a half inches where that will actually overlap for closure then they may be connected there but the rest of the whole skirt and the length of that skirt is going to fall freely and separate um, and then when the back uh, folds in so that I have a nice um, 
folded edge and finished edge that's when I'll take care of the the little collar that will fold in and I'll probably tuck one side of the top down and then fold that up over and then I'll sew that in place and then I'll probably fray check the edge of that little collar as well on the on the edges so that doesn't fray so that's the gown so I will finish up the back seams and uh, put on the closures and then we'll go ahead and uh, put this on the doll and see if I was able to actually <laughs> make it so it will fit I am very pleased that with enlarging this yoke I was still able to get the skirt on and to have it fit fine and then the bodice fit to the yoke fine so I'm very tickled that my enlargements uh, at least all the pattern pieces matched and I was able to get it put together so we'll finish this up and then take a look at how it uh, falls when it's on the doll and here is our finished gown so we have everything put together and I am very pleased there's a couple things I didn't quite understand um, this ends up being kind of poofy here but I'm wondering if it's supposed to be the diagonal drape because it it kind of happens automatically so I'm wondering if that's what it's supposed to be like because there were no clear pictures of the front of the gown on the pattern so I'm wondering if that's just what it's supposed to be but because it was a little odd I went ahead and just put a few little decorative ribbon flowers here um, hopefully my camera will want to focus um, just to kind of make it look more on purpose but it does fit her so I'm very happy about that so we'll go ahead and uh, back up here and take a look at the skirting so here is the part that has a lift which is only on the one side which is unique and the fall in the back so it is longer in the back and oh here we'll scoot this back there we go I'm kind of looking through my camera viewer here and then I have to look <laughs> up beside it so here's the back and so there's a lot more pleating and gathers here that has to do with this lift and then I was able to get it all the way closed with some snaps so there is a little bit of a gap here but it's not anything that I'm upset about <laughs> at this point I'm just tickled that I could get it on her and probably on a slimmer doll it's gonna fit and hang even a little bit better because she's just kind of wide through this part <laughs> but here's the the back of the little puffy sleeves and then we'll kind of swing around and you can kind of see how the front of the gown is meant to just kind of come more straight down and then have that little gathering here so it's kind of like the look that it's been gathered and pinned which gives a lift right here um, but that's just actually how the pattern falls so oh and then here's her little hat which was just a fabulous find at the doll show that I just absolutely love her hat so I love that this uh, skirting has kind of a bluish gray look to it with the green so I like the hat with it so this is the gown section of the pattern for the 1892 gown outfit that we're putting together the last bit that we'll need to do is the lacy overlay bodice so it's going to be of a lace that's similar to this vellum look type of lace so it's not just you know a lot of lacy holes type of thing but it's kind of it looks like well like vellum paper where you can see through it but it's it's a solid type of fabric lace and I just like the look of that to me it looked kind of old-fashioned so the bodice pieces the lace overlay will be that same color and that same type of lace just a different a different lace so it's a lot wider and I was able to get the the pieces that will go over the sleeve and then the bodice so that will be our next video is putting that part together but in the meantime I am very happy with the gown 
and how it went together. Everything fit. Um, I think if I'd make another one, rather than some of this pleating, um, it was a little awkward. Um, it all fit and everything, but the way it hangs is a little strange. So I may gather that the same way I gathered the underskirt. I'm not sure, but here's our, our underskirt with its lace on it. And then, of course, um, she has on the petticoat and the combination undergarment because I want to show how this will actually fit with all the layers in place. So if you can kind of tell this is a little lumpy up here, that's because it has the combination undergarment underneath the dress. So there we go. That is the 1982 gown and how it comes together. I know the lace is a little more modern on the skirting, but I do like it. I like the colors. Um, I don't think the colors are too outlandish for the look of the gown. And um, yeah, we'll go ahead and wrap up this video and then I'll see you next time when we do the bodice. Bye!